It's been one month since the rape and murder of a resident doctor at R.G. Carr Hospital in Kolkata on August 8. A lot has happened since then, but also not much at all. The main accused, Sanjay Roy, a civic volunteer with the Kolkata police, was arrested on August 10, 32 days ago. He has had a bail hearing which did not go his way, so he remains in custody. The criminal trial in the case is yet to begin, fast track or otherwise. People across West Bengal and the rest of the country continue to protest, demanding harsh punishment for the accused and better security for doctors and women, among other demands. Several doctors across West Bengal have ceased work in protest. Multiple attempts from the state government and even the Supreme Court to bring the doctors back to work have not worked, which is not very surprising considering the Chief Minister of West Bengal, Mamta Banerjee, tried dispersing protesters with reasons ranging from noise pollution to it's time to go back to Durga Puja festivities. Talks between striking doctors and the state are at an impasse. Well, they haven't even begun yet. Yesterday, the state invited the doctors for a conversation. The latter had a set of preconditions, including the presence of Banerjee at the meeting and a live telecast of it. The state government refused to entertain them or any preconditions. What else? New names have been adopted, like Nirbhaya. People want to rename the deceased doctor as either Abhaya or Tilotama. The West Bengal government's bill seeking the death penalty for rape convicts was named Aparajita. The bill passed the assembly, but the governor isn't signing off just yet, calling it a political gimmick and demanding a technical report. Meanwhile, the Central Bureau of Investigation, the probe by the CBI, is crawling along. It has ruled out gang rape for now, even though many initially suspected it. Roy, the main accused, claims that he is just a scapegoat to protect the real criminals. The Supreme Court Suomoto case is keeping track of the probe and the protests. So far, the court has pointed out many red flags with Kolkata police's investigation before the case was handed over to the CBI. These red flags include a 14-hour delay in filing the FIR, a key postmortem document that seems to have vanished, and some strange gaps in the autopsy timeline, among others. With the ball now in the CBI's court, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has, on more than one occasion, asked when will the probe end and why it's taking so long. Now, the doctor's family possibly has the same questions, but they are definitely not on the same page as the West Bengal government or Mamta Banerjee. The parents have repeatedly expressed their dissatisfaction with how the police has handled the case. They allege that the police attempted to hush up the case and quickly cremate their daughter's body and that the state government also offered them money. The ruling TMC government has denied all allegations. It also released a video in which the parents can be heard saying that they were not offered any money. The parents later clarified that they were forced to say that on camera. Last but not the least, an update on ex Arjikar principal Sandeep Ghosh, who has found himself at the centre of this case on many fronts. Now a separate probe into his financial misconduct at the institution is on. He and three others, including two hospital vendors, have been arrested after enforcement directorate raids on Ghosh's properties. Nearly 100 CISF personnel remain stationed outside the hospital after a mob attack on August 14. The Supreme Court recently reprimanded the state for not providing proper accommodation for these personnel. We'll stop here for now, but we promise we'll keep tracking this newsworthy case for you.